Okay, I'm going to show you how to use your GPS to go geocaching. The first thing you need to do is log on to the geocaching.com web website and establish a username and password. I already have one and I'm going to log in. You would click create if you don't have one already. Then I am going to enter my zip code and click go. And what it does is it brings up a list of geocaches which are near me. And what, what some people do is they just click on one of them and that geocache comes up and right here it lists the coordinates and what they do is they manually enter them into their GPS so I'm going to show you how to do that right now so right now I am inside so I have a weak GPS signal but what I do is I click mark and it creates a waypoint with certain coordinates now these coordinates don't match the coordinates on the screen here so what I do is I click on the down arrow and it moves me from field to field to field now that I'm on the location field I'm going to click the enter button and it's going to bring up a keypad and what this lets you do is change the coordinates so right now the cursor or whatever is on the right arrow and 42 is correct so I am going to, and, and we're on the 4 so what I'm going to do is click on the right arrow now I'm on the 2 the 2 is correct the next 2 is correct the other coordinate is a 7 so what I'm going to do is click on the up arrow and move me up to the 9 the left arrow moves me over to the 8 and the left arrow again moves me over to the 7 so now I'm going to click on the enter button and it puts the 7 there the next digit is my next three digits are 807 so I'm going to click go 8 0 7 is already there so then I'm going to go arrow over west is fine 073 is fine and now instead of 15 I need 18 007 zero, zero, 007 and then I click the down arrow until I'm at the OK button and I click OK now I can say find waypoint which was the one that I saved there and go to and I can either choose follow road or off road I'll choose off road in this case and now it tells me it's 2.31 miles away and I could go find it okay the second way to download geocaches is after you've found the ones near you is you go over to the side of the screen you start clicking the check boxes there and then you click on download waypoints and in this case I'm going to choose save I'm going to save it to a file this is the second time I've done this so it's saved that to a file now I want to open the folder that that file is in then I want to open with map source that file and there are the three geocaches that I downloaded they're showing up as waypoints in here what I can do I have my GPS connected to my computer is it auto detects the GPS unit and I can say send those wavepoints to my GPS 
and it says the data has successfully been sent. So I turned my GPS back on and now I can click the find button. It brings up a screen like this. I can use the rocker switch to go find geocaches and there are the three geocaches that I downloaded. Now the third method is if you're a premium member what you can do is click on your username go to member features and you can click on create a pocket qu query so I'm going to click here to generate a pocket query and what I'm going to do is click on create new query and what I'm going to do today is Tuesday. You can have it run every every day of the week or once and I'm going to run this once and then delete it. I'm going to have it find 500 caches and I'm going to get to select types and I just like to get mul traditional ones. I'd rather not get multi-cache ones because then you have to find like several for whatever, several caches for one one time. Um, I don't really care what type of container it is. I'm going to click that I, I want to see only the ones that I haven't found, that aren't mine, that are active. That's what I typically check. And then I'm going to scroll down on the screen and input my postal code. If you happen to be someplace foreign to you and you don't know the postal code, you could mark the coordinates. You could read the coordinates on your GPS off and put that in here. I'm going to say within a 500 mile radius. I don't think that's really necessary, but I want to get a full 500 geocaches. And you can you can look for ones that are are dog friendly, and or not, or so. Anyway, uh, what you can do is have it sent to your email account or to a different email account if you're like at a friend's house, and you say submit information. And what's going to happen is you're going to get a file emailed to you, and it can take a little while before that shows up. and it's a compressed file. I will open it and there's actually two things you get. You get the actual geocaches and you get the parking locations for those geocaches. So I'm going to open this And unfortunately, it opened with a program called GeoBuddy, which is a program I love and I highly recommend you buy, but I didn't want to demonstrate using it. So here are all my caches, and in GeoBuddy, you actually get real topo maps, or you can do view the aerial maps and but that, that's not what I really want to demonstrate. What I want to demonstrate is that I have 500 caches in here now and I can send them to my GPS and I'm going to click OK and now it's sending them all to my GPS. So now if I'm on my GPS and I click on the find button and I go to geocaches I have a ton of them listed and you can click one, you can see the title, and you can click go to, and either, you know, a lot of times I'll say follow road initially, and then when I get close, I will hit find again and say off road. So I'll just say follow road. And as you can see here, you know, all in one fell swoop, I've downloaded a ton of geocaches, all of which I have not found. And I think this is way easier than doing the individual checkboxes or manually entering the coordinates by hand.
Okay, there's one last method I use to get download geocaches to my GPS, and that's to use Google Earth. And this is when I'm going to go on a trip, and I'm going to go from where I live to some other place, say Boston, Mass. And if I did that, I would go to the Directions tab in Google Earth, and I would enter where to and where from and where to. And it will generate the route between Pittsfield, Mass., and Boston. What you do is you right click on the very top of your route that it generated and say Save Place As. And it'll give it a name. You don't have to change that. But you do have to change the file type to KML. And then you say Save. Then you go to the geocaching website and you go to your username. This is another premium member feature. And you go to member features and you click on create a pocket query. But this time instead of creating a new query you go over to the side and say find caches along a route. And then there might be some public routes from one city to another, but they never seem to match where I'm going. So what I do is I upload that, G, that KML file from my computer. And I think I saved it in Documents. And here it is. I say Open. I say Upload. This is where it's a little screwy. Okay, so I can preview that route and you see it over there. So it's going from Pittsfield to Boston, Mass, which is perfect. 134 miles, there's 49 points in the route. So this always throws me is, I think, you know, the route's okay, but what you actually have to do is you have to click the check marks there and go over to the side and click Save Selected Routes. Now, it's saved here. And what you can do is you can create a pocket query. And you can give it a name. You can choose the day it should generate. I'd like it to generate to today. Um, you can say how big a radius on either side of the road do you want to search. And usually when I'm traveling on a highway or something, I just want to stop at the rest areas and get caches there. So I don't make this very big. You can make it five miles, but I usually make it pretty small. Then, you know, I don't want to run out of caches, and so I usually put that to the maximum. Then where it says, what type of cache? I only look for traditional ones. The other ones are a pain in the ass. And I want to only find the ones I haven't found. I don't want ones I own. And that are active. Once you're done with choosing those things, you can you want to input your you want to send say where it's going to go to and click submit information. So here's the email I got from geocaching.com. Comes as a zip file. I'm going to open it up. And in this case, I'm just going to click on it. It'll open up in. Map source. That's strange. But, um, so finding caches along a route within a half mile of the highway, it came up with 85 caches. I'm going to zoom out to 30 miles. And here you can see how there's caches all the way from Pittsfield over here along the Mass Pike all the way to Boston. You could download those to your GPS by clicking on this button right there and you'd be in business for your trip. So that's all I really have to show you. Thanks for watching.